based on the tribes, based on the area, and based on the nations. So this is what is Islam. And now that is what is the scriptures of Islam. Now coming back to Christianity, what do we mean by Christianity? Because our topic is the concept of God in Christianity and in Islam in the light of sacred scripture. So I feel the privilege not to speak on behalf of just one particular religion, but I will try to speak on the both of the subject. Now, while I was doing my research uh, on this term Christianity, the word Christianity I haven't found in the Bible. So I had to do my research that what does Christianity means? Where does it originate? And where does Christianity come from? Did Christ or Jesus, peace be upon him, did he say that his religion is Christianity? The answer is no. Did he say that I am the Christ? The answer is no. If you know that Christ is a Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. Messiah in Hebrew, Messi in Arabic, it means anointed one, the one who is anointed. And the Greek word for the anointed one is Christos. The priest and the kings, in consecration to their offices, they were anointed. So the people say that from now on, you are our high priest. From now on, you are our king. So the terms in Greek for anointed one is Christos, but the early Christian, Christians they chop off the oars and they left with Christ because it's too big to, for them to pronounce. So they left with Christ and that become his name. So he never says that his religion is Christianity. If any of you have the good fortune of the second coming of Jesus Christ, please be upon him. And if you have good fortune to meet him and if you ask him that, oh Jesus, please be upon him, what is your religion? It, if he says Christianity, then you can further ask Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, that, oh Jesus, peace be upon him, what church you belong to? Are you a Roman Catholic? Are you a Lutheran? Are you a Presbyterian? Are you a Seven Days Adventist? Are you a Mormon? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? What church you belong to? It's a ridiculous question. You agree? So, this term, Christianity and the Christian, is your creation. Where does it originate? It is in the New Testament. If you read in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26, there is a place called Antioch, where the enemies of the followers of the Christ, they were disparagingly pointed to them that you are Christian, meaning the worshiper of Christ. So this term first, Christian, as coined and invented by the enemies of the followers of the Christ. They say that you people, those who worship Christ, you will be called as a Christian. From where we get Christianity. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never heard this term Christ in his lifetime and he never heard this term Christianity in his lifetime. If there are any Christians or if the respected speaker during his course of talk, if he can give us a better definition that we would like to hear from him. So, now coming back to the sacred scriptures of Christianity, the Christian considered the Holy Bible is to be their most secret book, their source of authority. If you know the word Bible is also not to be found in the Bible, it is only in the cover. But the Bible is also come from the Greek word Biblos or Biblia, which means a collection of books. The Bible, in the Roman Catholic Church, in the Dua version, they have 73 books. And this one is the Protestant Bible, which has 66 books. So these 66 books together, it says that this is a Biblos. And the early Christians, as I was saying, they were always had a sickness to talk of the Oz, and they left with Bible. So Biblos, it comes to Bible, and they add a holy before it, that becomes holy Bible. That is the sacred books, what the Christendom considered as to be secret. 
So this is in brief regarding Islam and Christianity and its sacred scriptures. Now coming back to the main subject, that concept of God in the light of sacred scriptures in Christianity and in Islam. As I said earlier, that it is not appropriate for us to understand any religion by to observe the followers what they are practicing. What I say, or what Mr. Paul Martin say, is not that what we wanted to come here to listen, but what the sacred scriptures of these two great respected religions says, we came here to listen that. As the Quran says, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa im bainana wa bainakum, that let us come in a common platform as between us and you. So we choose to come to find the commonalities between these two sources of authority of two great religions. But the source of authority of this religion, let us now examine by cross-examining these two books, that what does this book say? But we are now analyzing one major topic, that is Allah na'bud illallah, that we worship none but one same almighty God. I would like to give you very brief about the concept of God in Islam. The most concise definition that any Muslims can give you about this concept of God by quoting a chapter from the Quran, the name of the chapter is Surah Ikhlas. That is happened to be chapter 112 in the Glorious Quran. Some 1500 years ago, some Christians deputation from a place called Nazran, they visited the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, from where we have the Masjid al-Nawami, the mosque of the Prophet at this present moment at Medina. They slept there, they ate there, and during the course of their discussions, the spokesman for the Christians, he posed the questions to the Holy Prophet of Islam that, all right, what is the concept of your religion? And God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed this chapter, chapter 112, Surah Ikhlas, to define himself. It says, Qul Allahu ahad, say that he is Allah one and only. Allahu samad, that he is the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, neither is he beget, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kufu an ahad, and there is nothing whatever like unto him. The touchstone of theology in four verses. There isn't any definition in this whole universe which can clearly define the concept of God as like the Quran. I say the touchstone of theology. Theo in Greek means God, and logi means to study. So theology means the study of God. So if any person living any part of the world says that so and so candidate is God, and that if that candidate fits with these four verses of the Quran, we Muslims have got no objection to accepting that person or that candidate as God Almighty. But if he does not fit with these four verses, we reject him. For example, we wanted to examine that in the world today, there are no less than two billion population people, they are worshipping Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as God. Now, let Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, to put on the test of Surah Ikhlas. The first is, Qul Allahu Ahad, say he is Allah one and only. Is Jesus, peace be upon him, is the one and only person whom people worship as a God? The answer is no. If you know in Korea, Salmyon Moon, people worship him as God. In America, Father Divine, the blacks and the whites, they worship him as a God. In China, people worship Buddha as a God. In India, people worship Rama as a seventh incarnation of God. People worship Krishna as an eighth incarnation of God. And they are prepared to believe about endless incarnation. So, is Jesus, peace be upon him, is not the one whom his followers worship as a God. But maybe the Christians will say, no, he is the one we one. So let us go to the second, second verse, that is, Allah who samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Is Jesus, peace be upon him, is he is the absolute and eternal? We said no, because the Bible says some 2,000 years ago in the womb of Mother Mary, peace be upon her, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. So he was born in a stable. And according to the preachings of the Christendom, it, they say that he was hanged on the cross 
on the age of 33 and he was died and he was buried